Hi there. Welcome to our exam AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Online Study Guide. This is episode 5 of 63, the Consumption Pricing Model. My name is Tim Warner. Today's objective in the AZ900 objective domain starts with the functional group Understand Cloud Concepts, passes into the objective Describe the Benefits and Considerations of Using Cloud Services, and terminates with the granular skill Understand the Consumption-Based Model. If you want a copy of my spreadsheet that shows all of these exam objectives laid out, go to timw.info forward slash AZ900. That will take you into one of my GitHub repositories, which contains the file. Now, what is the consumption-based pricing model? If you're coming here from the previous lesson on CapEx and OpEx, I hope you are, you already have a good idea. Think of, for instance, the ways you can subscribe to Microsoft Azure. The two most common subscriptions are pay-as-you-go, which is the traditional classic model where each month you pay for only those Azure resources that you've created and that you have running. In other words, you pay only for the Azure compute that you've consumed over the course of that pay period. There's also the Enterprise Agreement, or EA. This is a little different from consumption, actually. With EA, you enter into generally a three-year contract with Microsoft, you renegotiate at the end of each year where you prepay for the whole year. Now, EA is good because it conveys a whole bunch of additional benefits like discounts and you get your own management portal to do your reporting and management and all of that. But it does require that you've already done your due diligence in terms of figuring out what your budget is because the enterprise agreement, let's say you commit to spend $12,000 over the course of the year. If you've only spent $10,000 by the end of the year, that other two goes up the flu. It's use it or lose it. So that's another whole discussion. Microsoft offers Azure and a number of other subscription offers as well. But essentially, consumption, as I said, is most commonly associated with pay-as-you-go. You also see consumption with individual Azure resources. Some Azure resources, like Azure Functions, have a free tier where your consumption, your number of function triggers from one to whatever it is, I don't happen to remember what the limit is offhand, as long as your function triggers under the free consumption tier, the function costs you no money at all. It's pretty nice. I have some customers in my consulting business who don't pay anything for their Azure functions because the consumption tier is so generous. That having been said, when you're doing consumption, especially free consumption price tiering, there can be a performance trade-off. For example, Azure Functions, where you're using the consumption pricing model, function in general, pun intended, much more slowly than when you're using, for instance, the app service plan, where you're in effect prepaying for a certain amount of compute per pay period. Okay, as I said, when we're dealing with operational expenditure and consumption-based pricing, the challenge is to budget and to calibrate so that you're using pricing tiers that are not too big, not too small. Just right, if you remember the old Goldilocks and the Three Bears story. This also is incumbent upon you to learn the Azure monitoring tools because you'll never be able to physically visit a data center and connect directly to a server that contains some of your resources. It's, for all intents and purposes, impossible. You get insight into your spend by using the Azure, and in some cases, third-party monitoring and analysis tools. So for example, in the Azure portal, in the subscriptions blade, when you call up the properties of your subscription, you can come down under billing and you can print out and view past invoices. On the overview page of your subscriptions blade, you can click out this manage button, takes you to another website that focuses on your subscription and you can make administrative budgeting decisions there. I'm using a sponsorship subscription, which unfortunately isn't integrated into the Azure portal 100%. That's why you see my manage button grayed out. So how can I show you consumption-based pricing in Azure? Well, let me contrast that actually. Let me show you the reserved option. If you type reserved, you can come to the reservations blade. And the idea with a reservation is you're uncomfortable just doing pure consumption-based purchasing. Maybe you find that your monthly spend fluctuates too much. So your accounting people really need a more reliable operational expenditure. Well, if you know, A, that you're going to need a particular Azure resource for at least a term, a year or more, 
And B, you've already done the due diligence to figure out what the correct size is for that resource. You can get a really nice discount by purchasing reservations. And as you can see here, the reservation goes across many, many Azure products. As you can see, there's virtual machine, there's SQL database, and then there's a link to the FAQ page. What you're doing is pre-committing or pre-paying over a term say a year and you can pay by the month or you can pay all at once. There's lots and lots of flexibility here. But in exchange for your committing to use that resource over the contract term, Microsoft gives you a very deep discount. And as I said, it gives you more of a simulated capital expenditure that can be required actually for some businesses that whose accounting practices do not handle fluctuation well. So that's reservations in Azure. For learning resources, Microsoft Azure Pricing Overview, you can find that short URL, timw.info forward slash AZ Pricing will take you there. And understanding your Azure charges, Microsoft Docs have a nice piece on that. You can go to timw.info forward slash up, UP. Thanks, as always. I'm enjoying teaching this material very much, and I hope that you're enjoying it and benefiting from it just as much. You can reach me at Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. You can view my Pluralsight courses at timw.info forward slash PS. Some of my courses, my Azure courses in particular, are free due to a partnership between Pluralsight and Microsoft, so that's something for you to consider, if you're not currently a subscriber, that is. And then lastly, my website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying. I'll see you in the next episode.